Hello, I'm Kathy Kramer. I'm here at Thomas Jefferson's Cobbler Force in the Hands-On History Pavilion. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the weaving process that went on here at Cobbler Force. Uh, as you know, they had to raise uh, wool, uh, sheep for the wool, and they also had to plant crops. They planted cotton for the cotton fibers that you see here. They also planted flax. And this is what the flax stalks look like. And inside each one of these flax stalks, you will find fibers that look similar to this. This is sort of like uh, hair looking. And in fact, the word toe head, this is called toe fiber. And this toe fiber or flax is where the expression toe head came from when you see a child or a person with real blonde hair. The uh, wool from the sheep was spun into uh, yarn so they could use it to do weaving and also to do knitting with it when they were done. Now, clo flax cloth or flax plant is uh, made into a fabric called linen and this is what your linen looks like. You would still probably wear that today. Along with um, that, you have to weave it to get that material and then the process takes a long time. In fact, the flax flax process takes about 18 months to go from the seed of planting the plant and then to the processing until you get your material. The loom that we're going to use today um, is a standing loom. This loom um, probably was not used as much here at Poplar Forest because it takes a lot longer. They would have used a barn loom that has a different type of uh, process to it. And the only thing a loom really does is make it easier to weave. It doesn't really um, help in any other way other than to make the process much faster. In order to use a loom, you have um, threads that you wrap or cords, and these are called your warp threads. These are the ones that go uh, vertically, and this uh, warp then has to have a weft, and that's where your material starts to take shape. You have tools that you use. One is a shuttle, and today I have different shuttles. You can have a variety of different ones. This would be used with a finer yarn, such as this one, and you see the spool in the center of this, and also uh, one of these. I don't have the uh, spool in this one, but you can see that it would have been used similar to that. This is what your spool would look like. The thread would be put onto that, placed inside your uh, shuttle and then this would be unwound as you went and you can see how thin this yarn is. Today I am uh, going to use a different type of yarn along with a different type of shuttle. This is a shuttle that I use here at Poplar Forest with the uh, loom that I have uh, and you can see the string is fairly uh, coarse and of course they did make uh, burlap bags here, so this is sort of where their bags would have come from. The uh, thing with the loom is you're going to have to, in order to weave it, you can actually take your weaving cord, and as you go over to the uh, loom, you can weave it in and out, and this is called uh, actually a tabby pattern because it's basically a stripe that goes through. But when you weave, you have an over-under pattern. And what you need to have, and I'm going to move over to this side, is a weaver's sword. And this piece of wood actually looks like this. It does look like a sword. But it is woven in and out, over and under, and then turned sideways. This gives you what they call a shed. And the shed is simply a V shape in there that will allow you to put your yarn or your shuttle through. Today I'm using a different type of yarn. <laughs> Actually, it's a strap. And this strap I'm using because you can see it a little bit better. When you turn your sword, pull it out, and now your fabric or your weft is going to come down. And now you can see a pattern forming here where you have an over and under pattern. You also have, excuse me, no, is a comb. This is also called a beater 
On some looms, you have a actual bar that comes down and you pull it and it actually combs the wool or your weft down so you have a tighter weave. And you'll notice that I didn't go all the way down to the bottom of my loom because you will need these strings at the end to cut and then tie off. So you will have that. And that's process of weaving. And you can weave on different types of looms. And I'm going to come back over and show you a couple of looms that I have that you might be able to find or even make. This is a small uh, tabletop or lap loom that you could use. And again, you could uh, weave by just putting the strings over and under. This also is a different type of loom that could be used. And these are much easier to work with than the big one, but uh, a lot of fun too. You can weave with ribbon, you can weave with thread, depending on what you want. When you are totally finished and you use take this off, you will cut your strings. And in order to keep this in place, you will tie these together, maybe two to three strings, depending on how many you have, and tie them in a knot. That secures your uh, weaving so it doesn't come apart. And that is basically the process of weaving here at Poplar Forest. Thank you.